This is the final part of a three-part discussion on the Nintendo Switch. To watch the rest, click the information icon on your screen now. So what's up next on the Nintendo news? Well... So, on, on the, the other day, so the other day, there was this really big info dump posted to the subreddit that this morning found. The other day. The other day. Definitely not today. It, don't, don't, don't <laughs> name the day specifically. Don't date the content, Mango. It, it totally didn't happen several hours ago. Yeah, definitely not. But, but there was an info dump uh somebody shared details but like they were kind of trying to keep the document away from the public for whatever reason i don't know but uh, I, I, I yeah i i did some digging and i found the document so yeah. we got everything so basically I mean... we have documents from like july and september which um basically have like a lot of technical information about the switch now we should, pre- preface that this. Some of this didn't we should get preface this with earlier. uh well, one of us did. One item did. Uh, yes. But we should we, we should preface this with this is obviously outdated information. This the, yeah. the last time that uh, our copy of the information was updated was uh, September thirtieth for one of the documents and July sixteenth for the other two documents. So Which... this is not the most accurate. Uh, this is not an accurate description of what is going to be in the final version. It might be, but it might not be. And there's some interesting differences. Like, they have a picture of the Pro Controller with, like, glossy instead of, like, having the transparent plastic. And also, uh, the... It doesn't have the dots. And, 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 what? No, they have the dock. The dots. The dots. Oh, the dots. Oh, uh, but... The dots on the grip. Also, um, uh, they don't have the plus and minus button on the, uh, on the wrist strap extension. Oh, do they not? No, they don't. Oh, I guess they don't. That's unfortunate. I think they made a right the right choice in adding those. Yeah, yeah, it it definitely it, it definitely is easier. I think when you're holding it sideways to reach up there for the plus and minus buttons. Instead oh, of... is it actually a button? No, it's it not just... actually a button. It's just yeah, a thing to tell you indicator. what direction to put it. Yeah, because the two wrist straps are the same object. Wait, yeah. it's not a button. No. Well so then, the, the two wrist straps are literally the same object, it's and just, on one side it has a plus, and on the other side it has a minus. So it just yeah. tells you which way to put it in. So you well put it down upside down. Yeah, but yeah, other than not, not much to talk about on the controllers and the hardware ways you can use. Yes, it. there There's is. Okay, of... look at look at the grip render again. Yeah, the grip render. Ooh, what about look it? At the... Oh, the capture button. <laughs> yeah. The capture button is a camera instead of just a square. Okay, okay. This is what I saw. Um, I think I mentioned this on... A... Yeah, like some third party was... Had yeah, to be a, a, had a third party had something that looked like that. Like that. And so I think yeah, they, they probably, probably had access to these documents. Oh. Yep, that, that button I actually kind of prefer almost. Um, uh, I prefer it as well. It's more obvious what, it's, what it does. Yeah, I press the capture they, button. You, even if they stylized it's it a okay. little a little more, like the home button, how it's, you know, the home in a circle. If they made the capture button like that, that could have been fine. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's like Nintendo's brand camera icon they use for like their fonts. But yeah, I mean, I, it would have been cool. And then you, God, when you hand it to somebody like, oh, what does this button do? And like, Whoa, wait, wait, that's the capture button. And then they press it and then all the screen comes up and like, oh, so share your screen chart. Like, no. It's like, oh, it's a camera. It's for taking pictures. But, uh, yeah, I guess other than that, there's nothing too special with the hardware. Just yeah. Small, small, minor aesthetic changes. Yeah, which goes to show to you... 32 you gigabytes. Which does go to show you that this is obviously outdated information. But it will give us a general idea of what to expect, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So uh, let's talk about the system hardware configurations first, I guess. Okay. So the most interesting thing here in this outdated information is uh, where it says NX SOC, SOC equivalent to Tegra X1 from NVIDIA. Oh, yeah. Which hints at something that disappointed a lot of people when this came out. It's looking like 
at this point in development, they were using Maxwell architecture in their NVIDIA GPU. There is no reason that they should be using Maxwell right now. The X1 I know. is like a year and a half old. It's, and it's, like, it's, as they've said in interviews recently, that the priority with the switch was high power with low, uh, co- with low power consumption, and yeah, I like, mean, like upgrade and, to Pascal if that's your goal. Yeah, that's all I can say. And I mean, I'll say like at the event, like if you didn't know that they were running on a switch that was like a portable thing that was just docked, you wouldn't be able to know. What's actually what's interesting about this is the uh, the volume buttons here have like an up arrow and a down arrow oh yeah oh, as opposed to like instead of like minus. instead of left of right i think the reason right. that they did that the reason they changed it from the up and the down is mm-hmm. because of like if you have the orientation weird yeah well i mean if you're just looking having a it, plus like, and a minus backwards. makes more sense oh is it a plus or minus i like that that's a lot more clear plus minus Another thing I want to point out, though, is while it does say that they're using, or well, it does imply they're using the Maxwell chip here, uh, the battery uh, says that it's estimated to last three hours, which is basically the minimum estimate they're giving us for the current version now, of the Switch. It, yeah, and I think that that battery matches both what it says on Nintendo Japan and what it said in the Foxconn link, which said it was Pascal. Um, so... Yeah, and the battery, the battery, it's four thousand three hundred and ten uh, milliamp hours, and that's exactly what the retail version is said to have. So, and that's exactly what the Foxconn leak said before other so, people said it. So, this is this int- is interesting probably, corroboration. Yeah, like, it, it, why are they saying it's only lasting three hours when they're touting six hours? I mean, well, this is obviously for I developers think, to look at. I think the ant sure is it just really depends on the game because from what i heard i didn't hold the switch in handheld mode but from what i heard like sonic mania switch didn't get very hot mario kart switch got pretty did not not in sonic mania but in mario kart it did yeah so which makes sense to me a bad sign if mario kart is getting hot and that's like it's a wii u port like it's it's a wii u game basically i mean yeah, I mean it wasn't hot; it was warm, kind of things. What I heard, but yeah, but it will it get hot because that's not good. That's not good, you know. In the future, somebody's yeah. playing their their Switch game in you know two uh, five years, right? Pushing right. The hardware to its max capabilities, burning your hands. Well, I I feel like at that point there's going to be games that you just can't hit play in handheld mode. I know Nintendo's not going to like it, but I feel like devs would push for that at that point. But then who's uh, making a game you can't play in handheld mode? It's called One Two Switch. Oh yeah, so, that is true. They do have like iconography for like yeah. ways you can play the game. So I guess they prepare. Yeah, they got for the that. little thing on the back of the box. TV mode. Yep. Tabletop mode. Yep. Handheld mode. Eh. Uh, so, so so I guess Nintendo was prepared for this all along. Yeah. See, see, they're, they're thinking. I'm sure. Yeah. <gasps> Once also, guys, guys my favorite my phenomenal. favorite thing on this list is something that nobody's talked about yet, but, but, but. But it's going to support five gigahertz Wi-Fi. Oh, thank God! So that just means it will be fast. That's a good thing. Because I, it's a really good thing. Because like five mentioned. gigahertz spectrum isn't as used up, and not as many things support it, which means you can almost always get a better speed from it because it's almost always running in N or AC mode as opposed to like being degraded down to like G mode. Mm-hmm. So it usually results in better speeds, which it also has 802.11 AC, which is a good thing. That's that's recent technology. But will they allow me to add more than six Wi-Fi networks? Well, I mean, nice. they'll, they'll, if, if it'll if still have one up from from PlayStation, which only allows one Wi-Fi network. Is it really? Yeah. For God's sake, Sony. Does the Vita allow more than one? I, I don't know. I, I, I've only used the PSTV, and I don't think I've ever actually connected to Wi-Fi. <laughs> you know, the, the, the Vita had an LTE version. Was it LTE or was it 3G? I don't remember. It had a cellular Global version. Mobile data. <laughs> um, which, if the Switch had a cellular version, would you buy it? I would not. Um, I feel like I feel like we might. I still feel like we might get that sort of functionality through the app, 
but of course there's no evidence to suggest that I mean, and there's also people already have that it's called yeah. mobile hotspot but if your phone doesn't support mobile hotspot well then you gotta pay up for your carrier <laughs> anyway so we got let's see hardware specifications things uh, that well, i don't care something enough else, about well something else old. to point out is that the headphone jack uh description says this device does not have a built-in mic a headset must be connected to this port to use an in-game chat or similar features which also it's got a it's got a headset icon on the switch so yes it's gonna make porting older games a little more difficult i'm thinking ds games specifically you can't but... port you can't port super mario 3d world as easily yeah because you gotta gotta blow into the mic for one of the levels but you yeah. could, couldn't you also press like x to activate those i, I don't know maybe think. that's not as fun but also, would it even work? Because dual, do the dual screen even work? Well, it works uh, on Wii U with the gamepad. Like you can you can play DS games in gamepad oh, only mode right. on Wii U. That's right. Yeah. So, okay. In theory, you could you could still have a DS game. It would just be like you know a basic emulator, or it just has both screens next to yeah. each other. But at the same time, like. I don't think any of these documents even mention the mobile app thing at all, other than the parental controls. So, well, I don't even know. Like the mobile app isn't even coming till the summer anyway. So it probably was honestly a late addition to their plan. Like, like people are like, "Tell us more about online. We need to know how the app works." And like, I think they're still figuring out how the app works. <laughs> and that's why it's not coming out till summer. Like, <laughs> quite frankly, it's not coming out till the summer anyway. So. Well, it's more like How about you fanboys shut up? Summer. Um, what? It's more like the end of summer, fall. Well, they said a special preview, a trial? free preview version of the app will be available in summer. Okay. Like a limited one. So, and then the parental controls will, I think, probably be day one. I hope so. Oh, anyway. I'm, I'm, I think that's almost confirmed. Yeah. They're, they're clearly a lot more knowledgeable about how the parental controls work than. How and I think that the makes sense. Works. I think that makes sense, right? That's always been a part of their philosophy: is believing in strong parental control. I don't think there's anything too much that stands out in the uh, basic hardware components. But then we get the super duper in-depth technical specs, where it, it gives us the uh, CPU, which is a four-arm Cortex A fifty-seven core. Yeah, it's uh, got no, two megabytes L two cache, guys. <laughs> Does anybody understand this? I don't. L L two cache. That's the that's the really really fast like memory. CPU can really really fast. Mango's a nerd, guys. Uh, but the 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 moment everybody has been waiting for. <laughs> Nvidia. It supports H two six four video. Oh uh, yeah, that is true. It does support two <laughs> K video. <laughs> that's not what I said, but okay. Oh. Yeah, said it it does, does, oh, it does it the in video 4K? Decoder does run... That's 4K yeah. video. Yes. For MPEG-2 only, though, right? Yes. H.264 and H.265. Oh. both. Everything supports 4K video except oh. MPEG-4 and MPEG-2. Actually, MPEG-2 does it, actually. Oh, but MPEG-4 does it. Oh, but MPEG-4 has 120 FPS. That's going to yeah, get you see. a lot. <laughs> uh, never, actually. <laughs> anyway... The like, video at the same time though the video output is limited apparently according to this uh, 60 fps uh, at a maximum of 1920 by 1080 or 30 fps at 4k. Yeah. But yeah. Other, so it's it's got Maxwell architecture which is disappointing. But once again, it, it, it's an old thing. Hopeful, hopeful, hopeful. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, I other. just I really hope that the end of units are Pascal because we don't know anything about the end of uh, end of units. Well, yeah. Does it specify like which version this hardware spec is? I don't think it does. I mean, I'm gonna presume that it's still from the SW dev era. So I think that's basically all that we have there for the hardware and peripheral stuff. Yeah. I just uh, like don't want to get too down in the weeds on tech specs because I don't. Yeah, think it because enough. everybody's gonna fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, and like I don't no, want to be. I don't want to. I don't want to be the har the hardcore like. The specs matter. We need six million teraflops, right? You know, like I don't. We don't need that. Is it teraflops a real term? Yes. Yes. But oh. not six and million. And everybody of made them. fun of it. Every everybody made fun of it when Microsoft talked about them, and everybody thought it was some made up crap. 
all I care about is that I can run Mario Kart at 60 frames per second in split screen portably, which I can, and it's great. So that's all that matters. So the, the next section that we got a lot of information on is, is the account section. So you'll be linking your Nintendo accounts to one account on an NX system. There can be up to eight accounts on an NX system. We already knew that. Or Nintendo Switch system, I guess. NX. Yeah. This, this whole document says NX everywhere. Other than that, uh, th- th- they mentioned that uh, you'll be able to transfer your your money from your Wii U and 3DS N- Nintendo Network ID account. I really hope so because I want to be able able to buy like eShop funds on Amazon. I, I feel Please. like most people kind of already expect this, but it's just a nice comfort layer to have knowing that it's in this okay. document. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think it should be expected, but I expect like major tech players to be able to do things that Nintendo probably won't do. So I'm glad that it's in the document. And, and then things kind of, kind of get scary for a second here, where they uh, talk about, about friends. Yeah, how about them friend codes, everybody? Hey, they're coming back. Super Mario Run, Fire Emblem Heroes. Nintendo well, you see, Switch. it made sense for Fire Emblem Heroes and Super Mario Run. Like, if you've ever played I, a Japanese app, uh, they all use friend codes. But that doesn't... And I mean, it's really yeah, easy to share sense. on a phone because you just like share it via it like, a message or well, yeah, whatever. that's another thing. Like, I think friend codes are in a completely different environment today than they were back when the Wii came out. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Like, it is so much easier to just share those now. Yeah, like that's you can true. just take a picture or a screenshot and then Post send it off to your, your friends, your group chat, and like, or your Twitter. Yeah. Right, and boom, you got a thousand friend requests like that. But uh, you think you're that, back, well, back, when the, back when the Wii came out, you either had to like t- type it into your 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 QWERTY slide phone or call up your friend and read the numbers off. Yeah. Did you ever did you ever uh, add an email address as an authorized receiver of mail? I did. On the Wii? It was great. I did. <laughs> Why was that it took way email? too much work to pull that off because you had to like approve Actually, the email address. Mm-hmm. Actually, I'm. I, I asked why is that a feature, but it makes perfect sense for Japanese people who, their like primary way of connecting people is with email addresses, yeah. mainly because of Line. <laughs> it's also worth noting that this isn't the only way to add friends. You can also see a list of players you've recently been in public matches with, or I guess private matches, any match for that matter, and you can select them from that list. And also, uh, apps themselves, they can have uh, API hooks with the friend system, so you can add friends from within apps, just click a button, and friend request sent. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. great. Having API uh, hooks into but, the system is always good. But then there's this really confusing bullet point on here that I don't totally understand. It looks like you can add friends locally, but then you have to connect online for it to be established, and then you have to reconnect to them locally for it to confirm. I don't oh. know. Well, they do something similar on the 3DS, right? Yeah. So you can, like, add... That's the easy way to add friends on 3DS is add locally. Yeah. And I mean, like, Snapchat does that. (laughs) Yeah, like, you take take the picture of the... I've actually actually never had local network network. I've never had that work for me. But it may be because I'm uh, I'm on an American plan on a Canadian network. You can can add nearby, and it checks your, your network. Have any of yeah, you, yeah. Have any of you used the face-to-face method to add people in Mitomo? Uh, I tried it. It doesn't work. It does not work. I, I, I still don't have my 100 my Nintendo Platinum points for that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I tried but it. You know Zelda, what? It does not work. But you know what? I have 2,400 plat- Platinum points. I'm okay. So you know how annoying it was anytime you wanted to buy anything on the uh on the Wii U, any oh. DLC. And it took you to the e-shop. Every... <laughs> then you had to navigate the eShop all the way, no matter what. It, it was really dumb and really bad and took forever to load. It did take forever to load. <laughs> well, uh, now... On the Wii, uh, no, you could just buy something in the app or the game or whatever, <laughs> which was probably just Guitar Hero. Well, now on the Nintendo NX. <laughs> yeah, now, now on the NX, because we don't know what this thing is called yet, according to these documents. Yeah, definitely not. These documents are private, 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 private. Private. That's what it says. 
but basically there's uh, a, an applet uh so it's just some plugin that you can use through the system uh that will say hey they're buying something here's here's what they're buying check them out because you have yeah. a checkout system and we don't and i think it's probably going to work similar more to the, the way the 3ds handles dlc i i hope it's a bit slicker than the way the 3ds does i think it's probably going to be cookie. somewhere in the middle because like the 3ds if you want to buy dlc for something you have to do it in the game you can't buy it in the eShop. yeah yeah i, I think they're gonna some... i think they're gonna allow both yeah they, they do have a a uh a, a mock-up of the eShop screen and it show, says dlc content on that screen no, it probably just says DLC. For or no, content. it says downloaded content or downloadable yeah. content. So basically, this sh sh you'll go through your game and your game will say uh, like DLC section and click here. And then you'll yeah. go through, you'll find what you want to buy. You click on that and then it'll open up a little pop-up box that'll load the uh, eShop and it'll just bring you straight to the product like checkout page and you should be good it's to go It's kind of like exactly like how in-app purchase works on mobile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i think they're i think they're learning a lot of lessons from the mobile market and the which market. is both good and bad yeah yeah <laughs> but improvements are good yeah not being just super outdated mm -hmm. yeah helps. and uh currently the payment methods that are or that were being supported at the time of this uh th this document being drafted is uh account balance uh credit card and promotional codes uh Sounds very similar to every single other uh store service nintendo has ever made but there's also a little uh gray box here that says settlement using e-money on nx is to be determined which means that they were looking at the possibility of using uh tools such as paypal to handle this and please do they, please do they support more than credit card in japan I, I don't know. I do not know. Are we going to get might. Bitcoin in here? <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo I think Switch. Nice, Actually, now with um, your underground internet currency. I recall reading once that like you could like tap a card to the NFC reader in Japan to Ooh. pay. Ooh. I did not know that. That is an yeah. interesting thought. Welcome to the future. Yeah, right. Where it's easy and gets easier and easier to throw your money away. Exactly. Just, just, don't, don't put your Joy-Con with NFC in the same pocket as your credit card. <laughs> <laughs> or really in any pocket. You don't want to lose that thing. It's $50. Well, if it's in your pocket, I think the chances of losing it are low. Are less Maybe. than just carrying it around in your hand. That's true. <laughs> well, why are you uh, just carrying your, your Joy-Con now, like, now I'm imagining like how the... Uh, like the 3ds with street pass and it counted your steps oh you'd carry a joy con around as a little fitness tracker yeah or, the left or, or the right know. uh the right because the right all because the that's technology where all the tech. in it yeah <laughs> and then i think the only other thing worth mentioning here is that there will be a system in place so that it'll be able to check to see if you own other items in the shop and uh give you discounts accordingly so dlc yeah that sounds like made for like all dlc of packs and virtual console yeah because <laughs> they kind of already do that kind of stuff yeah so none right. of that's really and that and that brings us on to our third document uh where there's a couple what, the quick start guide for the s dev kit no no uh system features we don't even need to look at the s dev kit quick start guide that thing's but it uses clang <laughs> there's nothing to talk about in this it's just a bunch of instructions on how to s install the stuff yeah so then the system features document oh yes yeah. <laughs> favorite. the one with the one with the user interface that says dummy 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 wow <laughs> rude rude i i really prefer game icon great game icon game icon game icon do you yes for draft oh i do love i do love the draft logo other software and users ah yeah so so it, it shows news image like, news image news image <laughs> yes so so they got all sorts of like mock-ups of the user interface they got the the little like sleep mode thing that koizumi actually like showed off in a like 
in the uh, Tokyo event, but we mm -hmm. saw it for like three seconds and it was blurry. Um, so, but this is like the exact same design to that. So, that's just with a lot, just with a lot of placeholder images. A lot of placeholder images. I like how they're kind of going for a clean design. It's good. It, it, it reminds me a lot of honestly the PlayStation Four UI design. I think it looks better. As long as they have folders, I'm okay with it. I, I think they it's won't a little launch. <laughs> I, 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 well, I think it's a lot less confusing than the PS4 uh, yeah. overlay. Just the PS, the PS4 has the stupidest freaking like user interface in the world. Why is it everything yeah, sorted like, by? I, I never know where I'm looking unless you uh, use folders, and then it's pretty decent. <laughs> I never know where I'm looking for anything on the PS4. Yeah, that's why you use. Because they've got those two rows as well, and you can only navigate it with the thumbsticks. So no, Microsoft video. has like is on like their third UI concept now, as they do. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, and then they have the the screen lock. So apparently, in handheld mode, there's potential for you to have to like press a button continuously, three times, to unlock the screen. Which seems like a poor choice of how to unlock because it could just be like in your bag and just brushing against something to press the button three times. Three times. I'd... That's a thing that could happen. But well, what if it needs timing? You should be able to do it so it's like a passcode, right? And you enter in your own combination of buttons you oh, need to press. Yes. Like and everybody the, sees like, it's just going to be ABXY. You know, that, <laughs> that sounds exactly like how you log into your account on an Xbox. Really? Is that yes. how they do it? I did not know that. That's pretty, pretty clever, pretty yeah. creative. On the Xbox 360, it was like four, four buttons, but on the Xbox One, it's, I think it's six. That's interesting. Yeah. Then they got the home menu. They got this really fancy graphic showing how the home menu is the center of the universe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you see, back in the Big Bang, the home menu was central. They all got, things um, come from the home menu, and all things feed into the home menu. Yes, we got uh, options. You're gonna have gold points for downloads. Who would have thought? They have full launcher, which says uh, this screen displays all installed applications. Uh, all yeah. But then here, here's the meat of this document. This is basically the only reason we're talking about this document for more than five seconds. Oh, like the settings. Yeah. So they got a quick settings, which is. I'm assuming you hold down the home button and this stuff pops up probably. Yeah, you invoked at any time. Display size is 720 by 400, apparently. Application will not pause. It will run in the background. <laughs> I think they should like make it like so there's like an API call, so like the game itself will pause. Like it's I mean, this will take up like a quarter of your screen. The PS4 right. has a really nice game suspension thing where you can put the console in the rest mode and it will just save your place in the game. And it's right. Well, I'm a, I, I believe you can on. do that on this too. That yeah. exactly. And if you could, that would be perfect because I love just pressing the power button and then it picks up exactly <laughs> where I was. I, like I do believe I heard rumors saves, of that from... no anything. It's just boom right there. So I, I, the... I think we. I think I did hear that from like a Ubisoft rumor at some point down the line. Mm -hmm. So That's... they the options for quick settings. You got enter sleep mode, which you know you can do that with the power button too. Um, automatic brightness adjustment, manual brightness adjustment, both for handheld mode. In-flight mode, which I think they should just call airplane mode. Come on, yeah. localization team, please do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> which you can turn it on and off in handheld mode, but you can only turn it off in TV mode, <laughs> which is sure. Um, and then they got they have back, which just closes it, and uh, system status display. Which shows battery and what connection in the time. They got the power menu, which I don't know. What, oh, it's when you hold the power button for three seconds. That makes sense. And you can set it to sleep. Re you can re do a soft reboot. Well, dang. That's a that's a new one. Are there any other consoles that allow soft reboots? Game Boy. <laughs> Well, actually, doesn't the uh, 3DS do like a semi-soft reboot if you hold down the power button? If you like, hold it, it down, it, no, it just turns off. Or no, if you just tap it, you tap it, and it'll take you to that button, that screen that says like 
Yeah, but that's not, a re- that's not a reboot. It doesn't. It's not a reboot. If you just tap it, then it. If well, you, you want to hold the... it for like a second, but then it'll be like, oh yeah, yeah. close it to turn on rest mode. Yeah, which now, you, you can, could have you done get easily the, by just. You can get the 3ds to reboot itself, but you have to have some special circumstance to do that, like quitting some game that uses the extra RAM mode on an old 3ds or something. Yes. Which there are games that I think does the new Pokemon do that? Smash does it. Pokemon does it. Because um, like there's a mode on the 3ds which uses so much RAM that you can't close the software without having to reboot it. Um, yeah, those are the ones I've played recently. But it's weird because I those are the games I've been playing on my 3ds mainly. So when I try to open like Fire Emblem, it just instantly boots up and it always catches me off guard. Yeah. Uh, captures an album. So okay. This is where I this is where I have a problem. So it captures wow. screenshots at 720p. That's fine. You can re, you can capture them at 720p, but it use, captures them as JPEGs. Don't oh. capture screenshots as JPEGs. Then you like get I JPEG. A, you get JPEG compression. JPEG compression is fine for taking a picture with your camera, but it is not for taking a screenshot because all the text will have artifacts around it. This is why you use PNG for screenshots. You, you screwed up, Nintendo. You can store a thousand of them on the system memory, or ten thousand on the and then SD card. A thousand on the uh, SD card. No, ten thousand on the SD card. Ten thousand? Are you sure? Yeah, count your zeros. Okay. Now, what I'm, I mean, well, I what I'm wondering, time. what I'm wondering is uh, when you like pop in your SD card and it formats it for the Switch as it probably will. Uh, will it just like, reserve the space for this ten thousand off the bat like that? It's a good question. No. I doubt it. I mean, there are 500 kilobytes. What's 500 kilobytes times 10,000? Let's see here. Oh, on screen math, flying it out the calculator. All right, let, let's let's do the math. That's a uh, five million. Going. That's five million kilobytes, which is that's uh like it's like four gigs. Um, yeah, that's four, four and a half gigabytes. Yeah, um, that's not reserved. <laughs> Uh, you can view the screenshots from the album button. You can write text on screenshots because you can't just write text in the tweet. <laughs> oh, and you can't post screenshots using the NX development hardware. I wonder why. Um, so they've got my page, which is like a user page. You like can got your profile. Yeah, yeah. So Nothing too special here. Profile, friends list. You can check player history, manage your blocked users, change your user settings. It's pretty easy. Pretty simple stuff. They've got other things about this too, but you know, the keyboard like then just a bunch of screenshots, it's not really got, worth going into. Like screenshot of the keyboard, it looks like the screenshot of the keyboard you've already seen. And you, you, like it, there's really nothing worth talking about here if you ask me. It's it's yeah. all fairly standard. It's just a uh, bunch of screenshots of there, the mockups for the UI. There's a web browser, but developers have to use it. Um there's not a web you'll browser. You'll probably for you. be able to log on to you'll probably be able to log on to public Wi Fi, which is something I was nervous about when they said no browser. We'll see about that. They got the overlay notifications, which we kind of already saw in like the parental controls video. Yeah, it, it's most of the same stuff. Only they've got stuff for like batteries low, controller batteries low. Uh, but yeah. one that I find really interesting is that uh, games with uh, online servers will be able to send notifications through the system. So if you're playing a game with upcoming maintenance, you'll get a notification uh, pop up on your screen when they announce that. So that's a good, that's a good idea. But yeah, uh, does anybody else have anything to say on this? Because I think we've just about covered everything. Um. I want to actually like get a Nintendo Switch so we can stop speculating <laughs> about this. <laughs> oh man, so we're making even more podcasts about the Nintendo Switch. Well, so here's the thing. So a lot has happened between our recording and now when you're listening to this. There's been some leaked videos of the Switch interface. There's been a lot of drama regarding the Switches and those leaked videos being s- stolen goods. There have been review units that have been sent out and received. Well, now the embargo for the console's hardware and UI have been lifted, and we recorded some impressions of the Switch's interface and other features of the console, but the information went out has since been officially revealed, not in leaks and stuff. 
So we should probably point people towards other sources of information. We're going to put a couple links in the show notes of uh, a couple UI overviews we liked and the leaked videos we went over if you just wanted to go check those out. All right, that's all we had to say. So thanks for listening, and we hope to see you guys back here soon once we have our consoles and our Zelda so we can talk about those. So see you guys.